We are here in Rio de Janeiro, a city of more than six million people that is one of the world's great consumer cities. This is a place of enormous pleasure, a place of promise, and also a place of perils. And it's a city which has been dazzling the world in many ways for centuries. Rio gets its start in the 16th century, and it's a port. And of course, that port is why water is all around us. It has the advantage of a protected natural bay, which the Portuguese and the French initially fight over. Its port status continues to enable it to succeed during the colonial era, but in some sense is overshadowed by Salvador de Bahia in the north, where the sugar captaincies are the real heart of the Brazilian colony. But then, as minerals, gold in particular, is discovered in the interior, Rio de Janeiro starts to grow. It has more accessibility because of its more southerly location. It becomes the capital of colonial Brazil in the 1760s. Forty years later, when Napoleon arrives in Lisbon, the king of Portugal, João VI, has two options, abdication or exit. He chooses the latter. He crosses the Atlantic and sets up his new court right here in Rio. Somewhat remarkably, when Napoleon meets his Waterloo, he doesn't go back. He's clearly decided that Rio has a certain amount of appeal relative to old Lisbon. So he remains, at least until the early 1820s, when an uprising brings him back to Portugal. His son stays after that, and when Brazil declares his independence, Dom Pedro I becomes the emperor, and his son, Pedro II, would remain as emperor for decades. In some sense, this is a city that became an imperial capital because it was so pleasant, reminding us of the power of the amenities of a city to drive its success. The empire falls and is replaced by the old republic. National leaders continue to invest in broad boulevards, in splendid buildings, in amenities that make the city healthier. And in some sense, even after Rio ceases to be the national capital in 1960, national leaders continue to invest. They invest in an amazing soccer stadium. They invest in infrastructure around the World Cup and the Olympics. This has the advantage of being a city of pride for all Brazilians, and it continues to get those national investments. But in some sense, the most magical things that happen are the groundswell of talent. It's the combination of brilliance that come together when smart people learn from one another in cities like Rio. It's the combinations that brought us Bossa Nova, that bring us the Samba schools, that bring us Carnival. It's the fact that we have five distinct cultural heritages that mingle and match and merge into something totally different. And we are here on Ipanema Beach in Rio de Janeiro, the beach that was made famous by a beautiful girl and by the songwriting duo of Tom Jobin and João Gilberto, a duo that was brought together by the density of Rio de Janeiro and together made musical magic. Ipanema Beach is far from the old heart of the city. These waves don't make it easy to land boats. Instead, the old port of Rio de Janeiro was centered on a peaceful inlet, a place protected from the waves. Ipanema only starts being developed when the growing middle class of Rio de Janeiro seeks relief from the heat of the summer. They come here because the breezes come right off the ocean and because some people even thought that bathing in the salt water would be a little healthier. The condominiums along here are some of the fanciest real estate in Rio. Every type of person can enjoy the beach. And there behind me, you see the favela Vigidal, a reminder of how cities bring together people from all different income levels. And when they work well, they give pleasures and opportunity to all of them.